it's that time again. Hi, everybody, all over the world. <clears throat> oh, my God, I have no idea what's happened to my voice. I think it's just gone. Um, it's gone on holiday because the rest of me didn't. Hi, everyone, I'm Russ Cade. Welcome, as always, to The Daily Show here on Men's Radio Station. Ah, always time for this. This is, um, you know, this is one of the best things I bought, right? It's an insulated glass mug. Because you know when you, you pour coffee or your tea and like in like 30 nanoseconds, if there's such a thing, just a nanosecond, it's cold, right? Where it gets tepid. So this, I, I thought I'll give it a go. I didn't have much hopes for it, but it's glass walled and it's double walled and it actually works. So cheers, my dears, all over the world. Oh, right. Um, you know him. You love him. Please welcome Neil Long. Greetings and good afternoon. Thank Greetings you for having me back, Russ. Okay. Longy here at your okay. service, ready to take it all in and offer a few gems of wisdom. I, I, like I, I, was move, I was moving on, but your friend, Robert Van Buren. Hello, Russ. Oh, shut will, up, RVB. Will Neil turn up? Um, yeah, I, I, I think so. I think so. Stop Hi, being Liz. such an anorak, RVB. You're an anorak. Yeah, we like anorak. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Kane. So you, whoever that is, it says Facebook uh, user. Hello, you're Facebook look, user. You're looking at us and hello, hello, uh, on, uh, what's it called, uh, Espresso Bar. And Elizabeth Green coming in live and uh, wonderfully direct from Manhattan itself, right in the heart of New York City. Very cool. Uh, hi, Elizabeth. And Paul Claridge, uh, oh, having a good day. Paul, wishing you better. Blooming heck. Blooming heck. Uh, I've got if a you story about Manhattan. It, it, did it transfer to Spurs? Or what did it do? No, 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 no. I was, I was. We flew to to New York from Ottawa. It was a very, very short flight. Me and my oh, daughter, and we had to circle Manhattan because they couldn't land the plane. Oh, wow. uh, and bless my daughter, she was terrified. But there was a, and then there's a couple sitting next to us, um, a Christian couple, because I could tell because they had a Bible with a bookmark here. And the woman started oh, praying for my daughter. And oh. the bloke was on his can going, oh my God, this footage is fantastic. It was so such good footage, certainly in Manhattan. He thought we could probably sell it online, I think. Please. Uh, Ian Foreman, Essex calling, Essex calling. Good afternoon. Oh, he's up. Yeah. Yeah. Partly escort. That's Good to have like, you along here. What? Sorry? What? I was, I was just saying hello to Ian. Yeah, no, I'm just, you know, giving it the full Essex shoulder movement. Yeah, exactly. If you're watching from America, you probably, you know what I mean, won't mm -hmm. get it. Tell you what, give it a wallop, give it a portion, know what I mean. And uh, from there, we go up to uh, Faith in Scotland. Greetings. Who sleet, who, who's right on the coast there. Right on the coast. And Hands up, Neil Long. Who remembers the Starlight Rooms Enfield? The name's familiar. I've never played there, Ian. Yeah. Was that when you were playing for Man U or when you were playing no, for No, it's when I was playing for Capital. Oh, right, playing for the Capital. Right, mm. do you know what? Should we bring on our guest? Because it's, it's, uh, it's a huge subject that we're going to talk about today. And uh, it's a very important subject. And it's something that we see every single... Oh, look, look Ian Foreman's reminded... This is it. You get to our age. I can't remember anything. You did, and so did I. So apparently, I... you played... Oh, I don't know. I don't even know. I have no idea. But there we go. That was the... Yeah, uh... PM me, Ian. I'm going to have to go back in the memory banks. I remember playing Ealing. I think that's as far north as I went. Yeah, I went sexual Ealing. Who could well, well, it? Yeah, da, 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 da. Before I bring on the first guest, I just want to give everybody a little word of warning. Here's fun. So last night, I opened a bottle of wine. I felt like a drink. So I opened this bottle of red wine, pull out the cork with the corkscrew, and suddenly my kitchen is full of red wine. It's like a flood. And I'm looking, going, what the bloody hell's going on here? What the hell? I'm looking everywhere. And and as I pulled the cork out, somehow, just below the neck, not my neck, the neck of the bottle, it had fractured. Hmm? Fractured. So the wine was just lashing out everywhere. It's all tasted fine. Yeah. The glass well, listen to genetics, there was claret all over the place. No, well, I mean, right, let's bring on our very first guest. Uh... That's going to be interesting. Hello there. How are you? 
Hello, oh. Russ. Hello, Hello, Neil. I have yeah. met this man before. This man is doing brilliant things. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited. How do, how do, how do, you, two, how do you two? How do you two know each other? What's what's going on? Oh, we go back what, at least. What have I missed? Yeah, at least half an hour. What was it? Who was it? Why did we get to speak to each other? Mark Jarrett. That's the one. Oh, there through you go. Mark. It's yeah. through Mark, is it? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I must introduce oh. you to Mark Jarrett. I think I think I already did. You did. did. You did. I've WhatsApp never had so many WhatsApp to... messages in my to... entire life. Yeah. I know. The man uh, is a some of them are great, of... and some of them are just like this is <laughs> my problem. <laughs> I'm not getting involved in this. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, but thank you for the introduction. Right, Jonathan McDonald, mm -hmm. uh, you're the co-founder of Social Me Too. It's something which goes to the very, very heart of men's radio station, and to be honest with you, uh, women's radio station as well. Bullying. L let's l start talking to us about it. It's a ghastly, horrible, horrible thing. Yes. So essentially, I have only been on LinkedIn in the last two years um, in my in my current roles. And to give you an idea of how much of a Luddite I am, that is my favorite. Get out. Jeez, oh, yes. hey. Oh, yes. I feel like I'm watching a Steven Seagal <laughs> film from the, from the 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just I mean, it's God. it's a modern phone, but... <laughs> is it? Well, by, I, by prehistoric standards. Yeah, yeah, I used to have a Nokia 6310, but um, the had, battery... Had, yeah, I, I know. Anyway, so, so I'm not a social media person. And I built context and uh, contact, and we all networked virtually throughout the lockdowns. And I met mm. various people and started to build teams and started speaking to women. Under uh, what, from... uh, hang on, under what under what guys? So you're building this up, but under what what's the what's the concept behind you? You're building it up. So the, a female connection said to me. Mm. Oh, yeah. Like a matter of fact, she said, oh, yeah, I get two, three DMs a day. People saying to me, oh, you're so beautiful. Do you want to marry me or something more, more um, basic direct. than that? A little yes. bit more direct. Direct. Yes, Very yes, good yeah. word. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and I'm uh, then aware because you st once you're, you go bing and your, your awareness is up and then you look at politicians, female politicians especially, mm -hmm getting death threats rape oh, yeah. threats i had tea yeah. with ruth i had tea with uh is it ruth smee the house of commons it was, really? it was absolutely shocking yeah yeah really nice woman so from footballers from racist abuse so there is social media has enabled people mm -hmm. to reach much further than they can just shouting out their window mm -hmm. and there seems to be i think it's schadenfreude and we're a, really a product of the TV shows of the last 20, 25 years because magazines and newspapers and TV shows are pretty much all about glorifying in other people's suffering in one format or another. And also glorifying idiots, by the yes. way. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Glorifying absolutely talentless morals. I think, I hope we're coming to the end of that. I remember that. Well, he's still ringing it, Nick. He's still ringing it. They brought back another Britain's Got Talent. Yeah. I don't Sorry. mind that so much. I'm thinking more the Jeremy Kyles and Jerry yeah. Springs of this world, yeah. which I did used to watch for all the wrong reasons. But I since I've got a much I, greater I love awareness of mental yeah. health, it, as a mental health advocate, I cannot condone that kind of programming. I just can't. Yes, it's it's baiting, it's car crash TV, and some people like that, but it's, it's very unpleasant. Sorry, so Jonathan, because you can see yeah. we're Neil passionate about, I'm passionate about it. Absolutely, I'm oh, passionate. All right, so you so, see, you see this going on see the problem so uh, i i uh, am doing video content for uh, linkedin because i'm here with behind the, i've got a green screen what can i do i can do videos so i start doing videos having conversations and people are saying um you know abusive messages are coming from here there and everywhere so i set up a recording called abusive connections a male problem question mark thinking that it would be nice and simple and that'd be that and we recorded that and a girl uh, called Gazelle, who's an amazing woman uh, currently in Malaysia, told me some stories that rocked me to the core of what she was experiencing. Um, and so I then started... Which oh, was I, what? Elaborate, which was 
You can graphic. say what you like. We're not the. It's not the BBC. So you okay. Can so just so, say so what you want. We're not censored. Gen genitalia and uh, sexual. I mean, like you mean not dick, sexual... dick pics. In other dick words. pics. Yes, lovely. So, um, and uh, yeah. So uh, and it, and she said to me during the call, and she goes, "It made me cry, and I felt absolutely horrible for her." So I then went, "Okay, this is a problem on LinkedIn." So I started this group called LinkedIn Me Too. Now, can I just pause you there for a second? And I just right. want to say as well, it's really very nice of her. And I just want to jump in and say, uh, "Oh, sorry, hello, Emma Webb, hello, Linda." Uh, your boy is doing wonders, and he looks so smart the other morning. Uh, he looked he look fantastic. He's got one hell of a job there, my goodness me. Uh, we'll talk about that another time. Now, in my uh, kind of simple mind, the way that I look at stuff, LinkedIn really is just for business. I only use that for business. Yeah. And I didn't realize in my uh, until 30 seconds ago, Jonathan, when, when you said this, that LinkedIn also had sexual content. I, I understand on Twitter, Facebook, and all the rest of the crap, but LinkedIn for me is purely business, and it's mm. it's very, really formal that, stuff. I don't do my gags. I don't do any of the other silly nonsenses that I that I do. I don't, nothing, business only. And you're saying that this your introduction to this was through LinkedIn? Yeah, I'm staggered. Absolutely I'm staggered. staggered. Really. Yeah. And then, so I've then recorded, I think I uh, did about two or three recordings of a show called LinkedIn Meet 2. And then as it started to grow, started getting connected to other women who wanted to be in the show. Mm. And uh, at a certain point, we had this meeting and I went, this is not just LinkedIn. <laughs> this is this is everywhere. Mm. So mm. I am by nature a very global thinker. So I went away and bought the w, the domain name www.socialme2.org. And so if you were horrified by the idea that there's sexual content on LinkedIn, mm. let me properly horrify you now. The website we built is absolutely no registration of any sort or anything you can leave your stories victim survivor testimonies anonymously because okay. i realized that what happens is people get things if they have got a smartphone it's there it's mm. right there it's in your well, neil and i site. said uh, last week and we've talked about this so much, Jonathan, like with mm. bullying, especially bullying of girls at school, which is, which is a whole different ball of wax. We can talk about that if we get have time. Um, when we were at school, uh, avoiding the saber toothed tigers on our way, bullying stopped at the school gates. School ended, you went home, uh, you watched. Uh, no, Tom no, it's right here. And now 24 7. And I have friends who've got uh, young daughters, and what happens to them? is jaw-dropping it and is I won't horrible. Any names. You know you well are. awful 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 let me tell you the horror then so the inspiration for the way we built the website excuse me was because i saw a bbc breakfast bbc news and a woman called soma came on that and she was talking about a website called everyone's invited uk mm -hmm. And she spoke on one Monday of her in school sexual assault, rape, in school. In school? In school. And Sweet. between, and the following Monday, she was called back because in that seven day period, 10,000 survivor stories of in school sexual abuse. No. The, absolutely the police uh, there was a bbc story again hang on, well i've got to stop i've got to stop you hang on yep. this is this yeah. is this is i knew this would be heavy but I, i'm stunned i've never heard this before neil have you um yes because i've had a conversation with jonathan before otherwise i wouldn't have never Only ever ever come across my desk who would have thought so, so where did you get this 10,000? Can I dig down a little bit more here? Where, yeah, where did the 10,000 figure come from? It's Well, that was what they reported on the news. That was why they called her back the following Monday, because 10,000 extra stories. But if you go to the so website... 10,000 people went onto this site or they came from? Yeah. Who did they come forward to? Just this site? Just to the site. So that's the point. The trouble mm. is that trauma, when you've got your device here, mm -hmm. 
goes around your head it goes around your thinking and it's cathartic to get rid of it and she knew that as a as a sexual uh, assault survivor that being able to speak about it helped her tremendously but trauma can hold for 10 15 20 30 40 years mm -hmm. before you respond yeah. untreated yeah yeah it so just festers, doesn't it? it just yeah it just sits there and it festers it's like... so there was uh in the news it was another story um of ten thousand overall cases between 2015 and 19 that the police are investigating two and another two thousand of those both the perpetrator and the victim were below 10. what yes and from your friend's teenage daughters, they won't tell your your friends below, their fathers. Sir, I can't move on from below ten. Below ten. So how did we get what to this place? What the hell? And, and why and why will they not tell their family? Are they scared of being judged? Because if I understand this correctly, it's it's the victim of the assault that feels yes. soiled and guilty and broken goods and shameful. Yeah. Um, there's um wonderful lady who I'll mention in a minute and she, she might be listening and she's done a TED talk on why I'm shaming shame if I'll name it now her name is Madeline Black she's one of my podcast clients I mean her backstory is jaw-droppingly horrific and what she the work she's doing in the world now is unbelievably inspiring she's just inspiring people all around the world she's an incredible woman um, I think you probably loved, loved to have her as a guest at some point Russ but um, it's just very personal to this conversation very much so God damn under and then, 10. Yeah, and then well, the I can't get one. past that at the moment. My head is is reeling. Well, you know, there's more. Um, oh, so well, hang on. Let's just 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 because we can only take so much horror at one one <laughs> one moment. It's like a David yeah. Cronenberg film. This show today. So don't don't listen. If you want to be horrified, everyone's invited. Dot uk. I could only start to read a bit of one story before it ripped my stomach apart Jonathan I gotta ask you this what if you're under 10 am I being really dumb here I'm not under 10 where where are they terrible. getting this sexualization from if well, they're that was, under that was 10? my question uh, uh, why, why where are they getting it from and why can they not um why do they think they can't tell their their closest relatives. That's, that's what I was getting to say. You know, are, are they afraid of? That's how I got onto the shame thing. How, yep. Are they? Are they afraid of being shamed or that they won't yeah. be believed? I can't speak. For Has those Me Too things. helped this? Uh, social oh, media. Look at this. This is coming in. Uh, uh, the, the general Kerry, Me Too movement. Look at that, Kerry Stoneman. You don't tell your parents at the time, as you do feel guilty and dirty, and think you won't be believed. Yeah, and of course the fault is completely on the on behalf of the perpetrator. Never the never the person who's having it perpetrated on them ever. Indeed, but no, it feels that way to it, them. It's unfortunately, it's not. It, it, it isn't. This is, and this this goes to so many things. It touches on so many things that we delve into deeply on Men's Radio and the Daily Show. Is this that people turn it and say, oh, it must be my fault? You know, yeah. bullying, bullying in the yeah. workplace bullying in a relationship any it anywhere it's it like it's got to be my mm. you know i'm, I'm yeah and there's plenty of gaslighting going on as well and and so it's like what the hell all right jo jonathan we're reeling yeah. from this my friend yes we're okay reeling. well let, let me give you a bit more to reel from and then i'll speculate as to why i think it is the case okay so yeah, um, it is reported more often than not now that um, every day a teenage girl in secondary school is asked 10 times for nude or seductive pictures. <laughs> and we started this show talking about how we applauded stupidity and vapidness and superficiality. Mm. Mm. That's where it's from. Our whole culture for the last... 2000 years frankly mm. has taken women and placed them longer than that and placed them as not even second class citizens but less than so in the christian faith less than the beasts of the field oh god you're well, that. I don't, uh, uh, um so, you've lost you've lost me 
So in the Bible, in the Bible, uh, the woman is created from Adam's rib, yeah. and he goes through, and the re and God gives him all these animals, and he goes, oh no, that's no good, no good. And so after he's created all the animals, yeah. he creates women. So just we your got, basic. So we got there in the end. Yeah. So just your basic Church of England people. This is why I loathe you, religion. But anyway, that's just yeah, me. But if you subject. really push someone. Mm. about what they believe the whole marriage being given away ownership now if you go to India, yes ownership yeah. there it is there it is it's the i mean the uh, this is going to sound controversial but um well, the, the the taught perception of man's relationship to god source energy whatever we call it uh, of that paradigm is pretty much being an abusive relationship it's pretty much, a, a, if, if it was physical human beings, it would be classed as gaslighting or domestic yeah, abuse. I don't understand how it ever, I, I'll be honest with you, how it ever, and I'm I don't just going to say I mean, one I'm... sentence, I'm going to say one sentence and I'm going to yeah. duck out of the conversation for another time. But yeah. I don't understand how everyone was suckered into it. I just don't understand. I don't. I, I look I at don't. it and I go, why are you believing? Yeah. It gives people comfort. Oh, I've I always see. said yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Let me just say this, because I don't want to be rude to people who have faith. If it gives you comfort, then that's a wonderful thing. If it, if it gives you... I had this discussion with Phil Dave a lot. Uh, people think we just talk about whiskey, but we don't. Uh, we have very different views on stuff, because he's, he's, he's a religious guy, and I'm, 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 I'm not for a whole raft of reasons. And I just think wow you know it's always like it's an angry god i'm going well, what do you want to follow why i don't angry, get it why are you always angry everything if you were the whole universe what is there to be angry what about you, what, what do you, you possibly know, need you know you've, you've made if you've made everything Crazy. that's fabulous what do you what are you upset about neil long at 33 the high street it's just bonkers. i know i'm sorry I'm, 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 if I'm you're offended i apologize if i'm not these knocking old you. ideas are not spiritually or scientifically correct to me so i've just completely well, rejected yeah, them yeah, i'm yeah. down with some spiritual stuff like meditation mindfulness and all that anyway well, there you go parallel universe uh, elizabeth green from new york is saying this jonathan you're coming back as a guest my friend my god Thank you. so much to talk about if you yeah, don't I'll like be. yourself now this is very interesting from elizabeth oh yeah if you don't like yourself, saying no is hard, even when you're educated and you know what you should say. What no pictures. But when you say, no, Elizabeth, I'm sorry to, to, to drill down a little bit more, but I've, I've met you twice for coffee when you're over from America. And, and I'm going to ask you this. When you say no, what do you mean no? Do you mean no I'm going to be blunt sexually or just no I don't want to do that job or no I don't want to meet that person for lunch whatever so just what, what do you mean? and self-worth of course but when you're 10 and you're under 10 this whole notion you haven't had enough time to start thinking of, oh my god sexually oh, well, well, okay so I, I so I'll mention a book that I suggest people write uh, read it's mm -hmm. called the authority gap so by the time children are five, mm -hmm. both girls and boys believe mm. boys are more intelligent, even though that actually, in their results, is not the case. It's not the case. Most it's not the case. It's because students. we are conditioned. Students. We're conditioned to speak up, to shout out, "Oh, miss, yeah, yeah, yeah." If a girl does that, oh shit, sit down, don't make a fuss, don't, yeah, don't. Uh, well. It's what happened. I'm going to shock everybody. Go I'm going to shock. Um, I read these things out. Jonathan, you wouldn't know this, but we also go out on deluxe radio. There's between 60 and 70,000 people who listen to this show. The show's streamed out uh, oh. with, with our friend David Wimble and the rest of the team over there. So I have to read it out because they're listening. They're not watching at the same time. Uh, this, is gonna, this is making my stomach not. I was eight. Jesus Christ. Right. I was eight and as shy as could be. Elizabeth, mm -hmm. I have no words. I, for once, I don't know what to say to you. I'm going to say nothing. And I'm at so that sorry. age, you'd be old enough to think you might be being rude by saying no to an authority figure. God's sake. Yeah, it, there's so much I education. Feel, I actually it. feel, I've got to be honest with you, I actually feel physically sick. Do you? I do. I feel physically, I actually yeah. feel... I'm sorry, I don't often get this involved. But on a visceral level, I feel physically sick. I'm going to have to read this one as well. 
Um, and in a circumstance at school where I was naughty and bright and pushed down, not allowed to bloom in a bright school. Wow. Oh, no, but she's cleared this up. Oh, thank God for that. Not sexually at eight. Sorry. Right. All right. Thanks, Liz. Worth. Right. Thank God for that. Right. Moving on, Jonathan. I'm shocked. Yes, and so was I. Um, and it ties in with the main thing I'm doing because this is I'm, I'm this is the so after I so after about the fifth season of uh, Social Me Too, which I've still yet to publish on LinkedIn, I realised that ultimately people that abuse well, there's a couple of things. So. Women suffer, my current perception, disproportionately to social media abuse. Um, and ultimately, there is a situation whereby people that abuse have often been abused. And mm. I think there's a whole hidden area of male rape and sexual abuse. Oh, there is. You should yeah. see the messages I receive. I get a lot of private messages, especially when we were looking at the uh, Jimmy Savile thing. Oh, oh my God. Creep. And, um, and we, I'll, I will talk about that in a second. And actually, Jonathan, I think I'm going to have you on as one of my experts if you're free. But okay. it's such a huge show to put together. I want to do it absolutely correctly. I don't just want mm. Neil and I doing it. It needs proper experts. And I need doctors yeah. and psycho psychologists on it. Um, it, it, it it's... Um, wow. Okay. It's... <laughs> Move on. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're making my head spin. This is infinitely worse than I thought it was. Yeah. How did we get infinitely here, worse? Well, listen. Ultimately, I've had life experiences and trauma that have required I grow, and yeah. part of growing as a person means taking responsibility for your position in a circumstance irrespective if something else or someone else is to blame you take responsibility for your own actions but that is a as it turns out relatively elevated position to take most people do you want, live... to, do you want to break that down for us a little bit? it's a more empowering one i mean it's 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 kind of a i've, I've studied a little bit about this it's it's Let's say you punch me and give me a bruise. Are you to blame for the bruise? Yes, of course you are. However, the empowering version is, and I do mean because these teachings aren't particularly common, with the right support, the right therapy, the right help, the right whatever, you can take responsibility, but that's an empowering thing because it puts you back at cause. Exactly. And being a cause of your experience is being different from being a victim of it. And it's, yes. it's a subtle thing. Um, is the person to blame for the assault? the victim of yes. it no well, yes. but they don't have to remain in the victim mindset and i've spoken to many people that have been through this I journey you and meant, it's not neil, always sorry, easy neil, depending thought, on the levels of trauma i thought you meant is the person who is the person who smacked you in the face to, do you mean is the person who smacked you in the face to blame for the assault uh, yeah totally. yeah that's what i'm saying Will are Smith. they to blame Will yes Smith. am i am i a victim of that uh, that depends on the way I look at it. I've got the power to heal. I've got the power to choose how I want to respond. The power you is are mine. Hang on. If you're walking down the street and some, you know, mugger comes up and stabs you, God forbid, in delight, delightful London, where that seems to be okay, but you can't stare at anybody. I've never heard such crap in my life. And this is this is this oh, this is just disgusting. Isn't it? It's another another issue that makes my blood boil. But if you take something which goes back to what Jonathan was saying at the front end of the show, the Oscars, a man got up, assaulted another man. That guy, Will Smith, should have been escorted straight out the building yep. and prosecuted. Good, good, good of, example to use. Is Will happened? Smith responsible he, for that? Good, good example to use. Is Will Smith responsible for that? Totally. Yes. However, how Chris Rock responds... The way I, a really good way I heard it explained was putting the hyphen in the middle of the word responsibility. Response ability. If you've got a greater ability to choose and respond, your response to that, that puts you in the in the role of creator of your own life rather than the victim of someone else's actions. Yes. And it does need well, help in to that, do something. In that That's second, somebody, in that second, somebody through violence destroyed their career. That guy's finished and Chris Rock became a hero because 
and I was talking about this. I, I was on another. Uh, I was on a TV channel this week. We were talking about it, and we were saying how did that person continue to perform? Because I don't know about you, Neil. I would have been in such shock. I would have been a, a mumbling wreck. Never mind I think about I'd hosting been, I a think show I would have probably thought people. something hopefully witty at the time, and then afterwards, I'd have probably had delayed shock. I thought, what yeah. the hell happened? Yeah, I, I totally but when you've got, you know. You and I both know this very well. Dr. Theatre flowing yeah, through you. Sure, it, it, can, you it, it can do the miracles, which I think but Chris he, Rock he, did. Plus, he, he's an incredible professional. But, he, you know, I don't know if enough people have said bravo to him for, for carrying. But, you know, what you were saying is just break that down for a second. Then I want to get back to the real meat of why you're Who, me or, or Jonathan? Me. Uh, John, Jonathan. And, or both of you, really. Then we've got this huge event. And I'm sick to death of talking about it. You're sick to death of hearing about it. But just from Jonathan's perspective is this. A huge event which is meant to be the most glamorous night of the year. Quite simply, the most glamorous. And the guy gets up, has an act of violence, is then rewarded for that by giving an Oscar and stands there with some bullshit Hollywood speech and crying and all the rest of it. And I'm a work in progress. And I said on TV, this: you're a work in progress? What are you, 12? You're a 50-something year old man. Shut up. It's completely uncalled for. And it's unacceptable. But people watching go, well, you know what? That's a green light. Look at this guy. He's worth 300 million bucks. Violence seems to be okay. Violence mm. is never the answer. No, no one's above the law. No, it doesn't matter how this rich is you are, it. But this make, is. It I'm just wondering right if that's through. learnt. You. So, so yeah. essentially, we 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 sort of sidetracked a bit into into other reasons why people are are, are react, behave, um, unfairly, unequitably, and and ultimately that. So the Will Smith thing, I think, is is useful as an analogy in the that that is a person who was the highest of his i mean you know lauded in the industry completely lost it and in fact for me the slap wasn't the thing that shocked me it was all the shouting and the the language twice yeah exactly so that uh, that that was was not just a one-off slap it was a slap and then a further uh, 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 uh. Mm. um and We'll have to have another discussion about this because um, it's a behaviour that I've seen with people that take cocaine a lot. Uh, it's a angry. I'm not saying Will Smith takes it, but that kind of just just to be clear, in case his lawyers yeah. are watching, that is Will not Smith. what our guest yes. is saying. He is talking in general terms. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, cocaine makes you into a raving lunatic. Yeah. I've so, seen people on cocaine. It turns nice people into absolute asses. It does. It does. And it so, does. so, I had a business partner who I realised was on it, and I had to get rid of, get rid of them. You have to. Yeah. So ultimately, you've got people at the top of our society. The oh. the nature of our TV shows, the nature of our magazines, the nature of social media, Instagram, where you're, it's all about this vapid and for superficial side of things, mm. and people are sitting there with their phone, mm. and it's just it's like a it's like a reflex. So ultimately, because obviously we we're maybe limited for time, obviously those people cannot be changed until they understand that the behaviour they commit is because of their own trauma, and that's something which comes to us. I'm fifty. You guys are a little older. You look better, obviously. Um, well, but it's I'm not something the Fu Manchu look. Are you not? No, I had, well, I had all that. It looks very professorial. Absolutely. The, the advantage you have. What's that? The advantage you have, Jonathan. If somebody can ask you a question, you haven't the faintest idea, then you can go. That's a very <laughs> interesting point, and you look like a professor. It's genius. Exactly. That's why I'd quite like that's to smoke do. a pipe. I'm loving this beer. Though. This is very good. <laughs> and, and, and the thing, that's why I'd like to smoke a pipe because someone could say da 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 da, and I'm thinking. Yeah, that's what I have for dinner, but I can go. Very good point, well, Neil. <laughs> and I look like I'm a genius, and I'm, yes. I'm still as stupid as I was. Let me Maybe. read this. This is coming in from New York State. Yes. It's Razor Don Brown. Male abuse is riddled with shame, blame, and denial. Yeah. It's often excused by the victim. Jeez. 
and the victimizer, as a society, we give very little attention to male abuse and the effect therein. Yeah, the point well, I was I... making about Savile, sorry, and I want to go back to you, Jonathan, was this. I was stunned by the number of people who privately messaged me after that documentary. Guys who'd been abused. And I was like, oh, what? oh, this is a can of worms I was not expecting. Anyway, that's, that's for another day. That's for yes. another day. So ultimately, I realized that the behavior of people cannot be changed. This movement, social me too. So the reason I called it social me too is obviously because of the me too movement mm. that did that did create actual change. And some of the people that had that behavior, the high profile ones were taken down, but it's an endemic problem throughout throughout society, industries can of all I, sorts. Can I just comment? Please. Um, I do, and, and you never hear this on other media outlets because they're too scared to do it. But to be honest, I'm not, or maybe I'm just too stupid. Is this some of the people who were leading the Me Too movements were the worst perpetrators of playing the Hollywood game? Really? I know that from uh, the people who are in the. No, we're not in the Hollywood industry, but I know this from top film producers, and they go. X and Y, you must be kidding. This is how they got to the top. It wasn't through talent. I'll leave it at that. Of course, it has been as old as time since the 20s that, you know, that, that was going on in Hollywood. Since the 20s, this is nothing new. And the people go, oh, I never knew it. What do you think the casting couch was? My God, absolutely right. Was it right? No, it was never right. Did God knows how many actresses play along because they would, you know, they wanted that career. Yeah, I I would challenge it's you. It's not. It's, I'm not. I would I'm, not con you. I'm not condoning it. Please. No, but I would challenge you on playing along. I would challenge you on that simply because. So the um, Rose McGowan, her hmm. book Brave, talked about her experiences. And she didn't even name Weinstein, but she was talking about that situation. Hmm. And let me tell you, there was no playing along to be had with the way he behaved and there's no playing along to be had if your life your career your earning capacity is in the hands of someone who's making sexual advances mm -hmm. you cannot you feel you cannot say no mm -hmm. you feel that this has been going on for so long i'll yeah. have to take yeah. one mm -hmm. but that that yeah, that terrible. so yeah so i i disagree with playing along i think unwilling victim knowledgeable victim knowing that you're being um abused and exploited i think you're absolutely right I, but i think you own and it's a kind of it sounds like i'm condoning i want to be very clear i'm not in any way but it's a deal they make with themselves i want to be an a-lister i want to be a star and if it means i've got to do this which is unpalatable all right, totally unpalatable. Some people are willing to make that that deal. I think it's they're both been true. Ghastly. I think there are some people like that, and I'm think I think there are also many, probably more, who are who literally just wanted to do it because they loved it and wanted to get to the top yes, because they, they were want, so good at expressing they love, what they're doing. They and then we're faced with that situation, but again, it comes down to the power being with someone it else, and that's why I'm thing. so grateful. And, and the wine so thing, the, the wine scene thing, was never about sex. It was only no, no, it's it about only power. Ever or, about or, or more power. accurately, lack of power. Because powerful men or women don't need to behave that way. If you're no. truly powerful, you have no need to behave that way. It's, it's all about. I've had a theory for ages that rape is not about. People say it's about power. I would, I would add to that lack of power. Mm. You wouldn't need to. You wouldn't. There's no need to behave that way if you feel good in yourself and mm. confident in your own ability. You don't need to take yeah. nothing. Else. I want to just go back to Hollywood. Just force. Want, really? I want to get yeah, I know. It's, it's repulsive. I want to get back to Hollywood just for a second. Just it, Unless you've been to Los Angeles and spend time there, you don't realise it's what my late friend Francis would call a, a mining town. If you're not in the industry, there's no point in being in Los Angeles. Being anywhere else, you don't need to be there. And when everyone who's serving you, every waitress, every waiter, every, everyone's wants to be a star. Every minicab driver, it's the same. They all want to be a star. And when you think to yourself, and this is the only spin I can put on it, and it's not a great spin, that there are how many A-Lesters in the world? Very, a handful, 
a handful of big, big stars. There's loads of, there's thousands and thousands of actors and actresses, but there's only a few big stars. And, you know, you're competing in the most enormous, brutal arena. And when you're offered that, that role, and it, it's a disgusting situation, but, you know, it's, it doesn't excuse it that it's been there for nearly a century now. Think about it. Because we're in 2022, 1922. That explains it rather than excuses it. Yes, hmm? I, I think so. So looking at that whole side of things is only just looking at a parallel as to why people are the way they are on social media. Hmm. The, the behavior, the actual physical behavior in the real world given the whole world in the palm of your hand if you if you've got to understand it i mean so i look at paul okay uh, for you know the purposes of it um but that doesn't then extend to the way i talk to actual women that I meet and interact. Do you feel desensitized? Do you, do you, you see a, a, a lot of the current wisdom, I don't know, the current thinking, I'm not going to use the word wisdom, is that exposure to porn, yeah. right? Especially at a very young age, which I think rolls right the way back to, back to the, the that school thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a statistic you talked about school kids is that it desensitizes you. And if you're an, a young kid, and you're looking at this, you think, well, every woman acts that way. Well, they don't. Yeah. Not every guy acts that way. They don't. It's not real life any more than the Kardashians is real. None of it's real. No. No. It's a, a, it's a hugely exaggerated version. It becomes okay. difficult because it, it stimulates the pleasure centers, the dopamine centers, and then they mm. get burnt out. So, you know, it's a bit like um, if people are on drugs, they say you can never replicate the first high. Yeah, it's overstimulated. Yeah. They need more the next time to Alcohol, get the same high. So that's why people yeah, start watching yeah, yeah. more and more extreme things. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's to do with the dopamine um, centers in the brain. Yeah. So is that is that one and treatable it, as such? Is that only is so? Is that one of the factors? And it's only one. That's not. That's not. No, but I'm just corners, saying that maybe. I'm not. Uh, I'm not even trying to pretend that I'm perfect by any stretch. Um, and you know, watching porn is a fairly uh, base admission to make, but I make that simply to say that I think I'm quite a feminist, but still watch porn. So, well, you can rational. I'm, I'm, I'm putting words into your mouth. Forgive me. But you haven't yet. But... If you, you can rationalise this. You're not going to walk into Tesco's and think that. <laughs> Every woman walking around is a potential, you know, porn no, star. I mean, no, they're I, not. I, they're there in I don't, I don't, I don't have a problem in. with what you said there, Jonathan. I mean, I've, I've watched Silence of the Lambs, but I've never gone and eaten anyone's liver. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. you, I, pe thinking people are intelligent enough to be able to separate, to separate the two. Unfortunately, mm. some, some people aren't, and that's, well, that's another it, level of confusion. I if people can go up to soap opera stars on the street and go, I can't believe you, you treated your mother like that, which happened to John Alton. Yeah, it happens all the time. They think it's a blooming yeah. documentary. And I, I, just think how, I don't want to be rude, but how, you know, this is about mental health. How thick are these people? How could they not see it's not real? Well, they because, can't, they can't well, I sound like a daily mail reader. So, so <laughs> let, no, let me, don't. let you me. like a rational person. Let me draw a number. Go on. Let me draw a number of strands together then. So we talked a little about religion and religion, whether you do it or not, is about your belief systems. It's about how you interpret the data coming in from the world. Now yes. I'm dyslexic and as a consequence of that, I experience the world multidimensionally. I'm always constructing in my mind different points of view of the situation I'm in. Mm. So it's easy for me to empathize with someone because I can imagine their perspective without even trying. They just talk That's to me. That's a great gift to have. It is, and it's the I'm reason sure why I follow I'm... it. I'm not sure I, I get the gist, but I don't understand okay. how the mechanics of it work. <clears throat> right, so... You think, um, you think in pictures, you're quite right brain, you think in I pictures, think pictures and images yeah. a lot. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Have you done any NLP, Jonathan? I've done NLP. I'm an NLP practitioner. Yeah, so you're a visual. Yeah. Um, mm. So, uh, but it's literally, right, so 
the the comparison with normal brains is this you'll be walking to work thinking about your boss thinking about lunch thinking about the washing you've got to do thinking about having to get the dog's toenails clipped thinking about a wife with a girlfriend a wife argument with your wife thinking about holiday in the next few months so everybody is wandering around the world in a functional state living but mm. having 9 10 15 thoughts Always. in their head Jonathan, now, i'm gonna from... can i invite you back because i have our next guest are you okay. you're welcome to stay oh, please i do, would do you yeah, stay? yeah yeah now, this is a completely different subject like even with the best will in the world neil long uh, as a pro of many years i cannot segue this neatly it's a complete bump 